we scored a try um, that was real a no try, and I basically called the touch judge a cheat, um, which is obviously a no no. Um, but looking back on it now, it was a de definite try, and it could have cost us the game. So I got sin bin by Billy Harrigan, um, but I was shattered thinking that I let the team down. And that 10 minutes in the dressing room while I was in the Simbin seemed to go for about an hour. I just, you know, I said, how long to go? How long to go? Still got eight minutes. How long to go? Still got six. I went, come on. Um, as I was walking off the field, I, I walk up, walked up the race at the Sydney Football Stadium back then and right behind me I could hear some footsteps following me. And I quickly realised it was my coach, uh, Gus Gould. And I was ready for him to basically tear strips off me in the dressing room for being Simbin in the grand final and probably costing us the game. And I walked in and I, I was hitting lockers and you know I was filthy on myself for letting my emotions overtake me and for basically you know calling an official a cheat. And um, he just he was pretty cool. He said, "Mate, you've got two chances here. You got one. On one hand, you can sit here and feel sorry for yourself and." You know, go out there in the second half, and when, you, when your ten minutes are up, and, and and think about what you've done, or two, just go out and help us win the game. It was pretty short, pretty sweet, and pretty sharp. It was after the game, uh, uh, journalist Peter Fralingos said to me, um, you know, "MG was really undisciplined there. He could have cost you the game." I said, "Yes, he could." He said, "Did you ever think about sin bidding or replacing him?" And I said, "Yes, I did." He said, "Why didn't you?" I said, "Who was going to tell him? It wasn't going to be me." So. He, he ripped up the dressing room, but I knew he was ready to come back out and he played a big role in the last 15 minutes of that grand final. Yeah, when I come back on, we had this move called North, uh, North Sydney, which I was basically just a dummy runner in, in the play. Um, about five minutes once I was on, uh, they had a drop kick, I think, and I heard Brandy call out North, North is on, um, which I had to be in a certain place and it's two or three plays into the set, um, the North Sydney set we called, um, I, I realised I was out of play and I was going to be in the way so what I did I just kind of committed to taking the ball and I, th I forget, I think Greg Barwick threw me the ball and as I was going to ground I, I managed to get a ball around the corner to Brad Fittler um, as I was going to ground and who gave it to Brad Izzard and that got us uh, back to 12 all. up 13-12, um, Brandy kicked a good field goal and there was about four or five minutes on the clock and I noticed that uh, the late great Scotty Gale had, had the ball, he'd come on for Ricky Stewart and I noticed he was going to do a short uh, drop out to try and regather re the ball. So I was about 30 metres back and as I, I just said I'm going to commit to this ball and I ran onto the ball and thankfully got a perfect bounce into the bread basket. Um, thought I was going to score the try, you know, it was line wide open and all of a sudden uh, Mal Meninga was sitting back there just loitering and he gobbled me up and um, as I was standing there looking for support, Roy Simmons um, shouted out to me and uh, passed it to him and the fairy tale was complete. Royce is about five foot nothing, I'm six foot five and I watched again, watching the, the footage of the game, he jumped up so high, he's legs straddled my shoulders. He, he basically jumped up six foot five to, to get, he was so elated. And that's when the tears started to roll down my face because we realized we still had Brandy's kick from the sideline to seal the deal. But once Roy scored that try, we kind of thought we won the game. And that was, I've had five children uh, in my life, which is the best feeling I've ever had. But as far as uh, sporting achievements go, that, that one instant there where Royce scored the try, I've never been so jubilant in, in all my life. And so all along the M4, back to Penrith, there was just people parked over in the um, in the transit lane, just waiting for us to go past with streamers. And and then we got word that we couldn't get into Panthers because there's so many people there. They reckon, they estimated about 40,000 people had made their way to the Panthers club. So we went around the back way through the, um, through the back area of the club and the supporters got wind that were going through that way, and all of a sudden, they people come from everywhere. It was like I, I see footage of the Beatles back in the '60s arriving, and that people were rocking our bus, and it was just a, it was an amazing scene. So. Obviously, '90, the town lost 
um, and we, we made a pact to ourselves that we'd never let that happen again to our local um, followers. And so when we won in 91, it was as much for ourselves as, as it was for our supporters who'd put up with 25 years of, of nothing. Um, when we won, it was just such a, a great week of celebrations. We had to go to England in, in three days after the grand final to play Wigan in the Challenge Cup, and there's no way I was going to that. I'd, I lost my passport <laughs> and um, went up to the Gold Coast with a few mates and a few, few of the blokes who also lost their passports and continued to party everywhere. Uh, 88 was special because it was my first ever, it was my first year as a uh, the first grade coach and won the Premiership and 91 was also special because it was the first one for the Panthers which was my junior club. I started back there in 1976 to come back as head coach and win the Premiership was uh, special as well and you know I may win plenty of premierships in the future but they'll only ever be one first one.